Good morning. It is your boy, Jay Goble, back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is October 25th today. That means we've been reading the Bible together for 298 days, and we have 67 days left to go. That's it. It is Crisp Sandwich Day today, World Pasta Day, National Greasy Foods Day, International Artist Day, Sourest Day. Instead of Sweetest Day, Sourest Day. It's interesting, International Artist Day. I'm not much of an artist, really, but there is someone else with my same name, Jacob Goebel. That's me, by the way. He's an artist out here in the Chicago area. I've never met him, but he has been an artist for a long time, I think. And it's interesting. I was thinking about maybe I should track him down, introduce myself. Hello, Jacob. My name is Jacob. How are you? You, Oh, Goebel? That's me too. And then there's now there's other namesakes, people with the same name. I don't know. I, I just, I thought, I didn't realize, sorry. I didn't realize that there would be so many with the exact same name as I, because I normally never meet any other Goebbels, period. And then to find out there's another Jacob within an hour. And then there's another one within like a three hour drive. It's like, they're all over the place. Get out of here. What's wrong with you? Anyhow, this Jacob Goebel is reading the Bible through in chronological order from beginning to end. Now we got to the end of the Old Testament, and as we transitioned into the New Testament, we decided to read each gospel separately. Just because of the nature of the gospels, and I didn't want to try and piece them all together because they're not written chronologically like that. They're written thematically, not necessarily chronologically. Of course, there are parts that are chronologically or ordered chronologically, but that doesn't mean that they were written chronologically. Okay, cool. So we're in John 19 today in the World English Bible Translation. We're going to read John 19 and 20. And we are at the end of the Passion Week here for Jesus. He is going to the cross to die for the sins of the world, of humanity. Um, Here we go. So Pilate then took Jesus and flogged him. The soldiers twisted thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple garment. They kept saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept slapping him. Then Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I bring him out to you that you may know that I find no basis for a charge in him. Jesus therefore came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple garment. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When therefore the chief priests and the officers saw him, they shouted, saying, Crucify, crucify. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When therefore Pilate heard this saying, he was more afraid, which is kind of strange, right? Why would he be afraid of that? Because this man was unusual, unlike anything he'd ever seen before. And maybe he started thinking, right? Because Jesus had just told him. He had just told him that. um, Well, let me go back to it real quick here. That after, after he gets imprisoned and he gets delivered over to Pilate, he says to him, um, are you the king of the Jews? And he says, uh, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight that I wouldn't be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not for here, from here. And then they get into this conversation of truth, right? And then he kind of walks away. And so then here he is, here he is now getting more context into what he's gotten himself into. And he, I mean, he had told him, sorry, back in, backing up just a little bit again, you would have no power at all. Sorry, he's going to get into it right now. He entered into the praetorium again and said to Jesus, where are you from? Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate there was said to him, aren't you speaking to me? You ain't, you, oh, you ain't talking to me? He gives you a little sass here. Don't you know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power at all against me unless it were given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has greater sin. At this, Pilate's always like, oh, 
huh. So he's, his gears are turning inside his brain and he's not liking, he's not liking the, the answers, not liking the results that he's getting here. At this, Pilate was seeking to release him, but the Jews cried out saying, if you release this man, you aren't Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard these words, he brought Jesus out and set, sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement in, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover at about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, behold, your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. Isn't that strange? I mean, if we think back, because it wasn't that long ago that we read the Old Testament and we finished the Old Testament, and there's this constant fighting and rebellion, right, against these rulers first, um, or we think we think about the Babylonian captivity, and then we think about, was it Babylon? It was Babylon. Assyria. It was Assyria and Babylon. We think about the, the nature of this tumultuous relationship between the Jews being conquered by these um, outsiders and the fact that they were they were rebellious. They didn't like being. They didn't like being conquered. They were, they were fighters. And here they say, this in, in this moment of submission, here I guess we have no king, but Caesar. So then he delivered him to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him, led him away. He went out bearing his cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side, one and Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote a title also and put it on the cross. There was written, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Therefore, many of the Jews read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priest of the, <laughs> of the Jews therefore said to Pilate, don't write the King of the Jews, but he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I've written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier part and also the coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from top throughout. Then they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to decide whose it will be. That the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they parted my garments, they parted my garments among them, for my cloak they cast lots. Psalm twenty two eighteen. Therefore the soldiers did these things. But standing by Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Therefore... When Jesus saw his mother, the disciple whom he loved standing there, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her to his home. After this, Jesus, seeing that all things were now finished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I am thirsty. Now a vessel full of vinegar was set there. So they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it at his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Therefore, the Jews, because it was the preparation day so that the bodies wouldn't remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a special one, asked of Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. What callousness. Here we are trying to be so holy that we're going to crucify people, this torturous way of dying, and we're going to break their legs to make sure that they die faster because we wouldn't want you up there on our high holy day, would we? Oh, no. No, we wouldn't. Of course not. Therefore, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they didn't break his legs. However, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. He who has seen has testified and his testimony is true. It's like saying, I was there, bro. I synced it. He knows that he tells the truth that you may believe. For these things happened that the scripture might be fulfilled. A bone of him will not be broken. Exodus twelve forty six, Numbers nine twelve, Psalm thirty four twenty. Again, another scripture says they will look on him whom they have pierced. Zechariah twelve ten. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked of Pilate that he might take away Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission. He came therefore and took away his body. Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred Roman pounds. So they took Jesus' body and bound it in linen cloths with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to, bear, is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. In the garden was a new tomb in which no man had ever yet lay, been laid. Then because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. It was close. It was convenient. Looks like Joseph and Nicodemus were both secretly disciples, right? But 
they were afraid, afraid of what that might mean for them. Sometimes we're like that, I think, disciples, but secretly, secretly. I mean, I don't want, I don't want people thinking I'm too religious here. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went early while it was still dark to the tomb and saw the stone taken away from the tomb. Therefore, she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have laid him. Therefore, Peter and the other disciple went out and they went toward the tomb. They both ran together. The other disciple outran Peter, because I'm faster than you, bro, and came to the tomb first. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths lying, yet he didn't enter in. Then Simon Peter came following him and entered into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying in the cloth that had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. So then the other disciple who came first to the tomb also entered in and he saw and believed for as yet they didn't know the scripture that he must rise from the dead. But the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. So as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. They asked her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord and I don't know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing and didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? She supposing him to be the guard, being the, she supposing him to be the gardener said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold me, for I, have yet as- I haven't yet ascended to my father, but go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. When therefore it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were locked where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the middle and said to them, Peace be to you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples therefore were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus therefore said to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they have been forgiven them. If you retain anyone's sins, they have been retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, wasn't with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days again, his disciples were inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being locked, and stood in the middle, and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger and see my hands. Reach here your hand and put it into my side. Don't be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Therefore, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. And that is the reason why the book was written. That's the reason for John, not to give us a chronological account of everything that happened in Jesus' life, kind of the reason why we broke it up, but instead that we might believe. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this account, the work of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that it would be, uh, they would have this result on us, for us that we would read, that we would believe, that we would be blessed because we don't see, but we've heard. We have heard and we believe and help us overcome our unbelief when we doubt. Draw near to us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all show notes are at notmanynoble.com. You can also hit me up, notmanynoble at gmail.com if you want to send me an email. If you want to... Uh, want us to pray for you or anything else you got going on. Thank you for listening and I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.